Palestinians launched two popular uprising against the Jews and the British blatant pro-Zionist policies. The first took place in 1929 and claimed hundreds of Palestinians and Jewish lives. The second, in 1936, was practically a small-scale war between the Palestinians and the British, who were also aided by the Zionists. It lasted for three years, and in the end, approximately 5,000 Palestinians died. The British also exiled the Palestinians' leadership and dismantled all Palestinians' paramilitary units. The Palestinians were left defenseless and leaderless. Uh, most of the Israeli commanders had studied the British reaction to the Palestinian revolt in 1936 and 1939, which became the manual book of what to do to the Palestinians in case of resistance. In fact, most of the, th of the atrocities you read about, and I'm sure most of you in this place know about it, most of the atrocities that you enlist as severe violations of human rights and civil rights in Palestine today, most of these violations were invented not by a Jewish Zionist mind, but by British mandatory authorities in the war against the Palestinians between 1936 to 1939. Examples? The idea that you demolish houses of people is a British intention. The idea that in order to make a search memorable to people, you destroy a house and then you move to the other house, and then to the other house, and then to the other house, was an invention by British officers on the ground. The idea that you shoot people without warning them, or you arrest them without trial, it's all from the reservoir of the mandatory uh, anti-Arab, uh, uh, anti uh, um, measures in 1936 to 1939. But of course the Israelis added their own uh, uh, brutal and callous uh, uh, ideas uh, as we went, as, as the occupation uh, continued. Then, in the 1940s, the cards turned. Following a string of British pro-Palestinian policies, the Zionists launched terrorist attacks on British personnel and facilities. Violence continues to rule in Palestine. British soldiers seek bodies in the Department of Labor building at Chesnik, where a few minutes before, a blast had partially wrecked the edifice. Three policemen were blown to bits when they tried to remove an explosive-laden truck. Shaky walls are torn down. After a bomb explosion caused by terrorists on the British headquarters of Jerusalem, one entire corner of the King David Hotel, a building of seven stories, was razed to the ground. The stone floors were cut... 88 innocent people died, and a good deal of the British High Command was wiped out. Their goal was to drive the British out of Palestine. The mastermind of the King David bombing was Menachem Begin. He would become Israel Prime Minister. His accomplice, Yitzhak Shamil, would also later become Prime Minister. The pattern of terrorists, or, in other words, Brutal military leaders transforming into top politicians is very common in Israeli politics. At this point, the British have had enough, and they transferred the matter of Palestine to the UN. The United Nations uh, sent a uh, committee to evaluate this in the summer of '47, and they recommended partition. And the Zionists eagerly accepted this, and the Palestinian Arabs didn't because they were still two-thirds of the population, and they felt this was unjust. And, but nonetheless, this partition, which was approved uh, in the UN after Thanksgiving in 1947, officially recognized two states. In 1947, the Jews owned 5.8% of the land. 
In the UN partition plan, the Jews ended up with 56% of the land, almost 10 times of what they actually owned. The Palestinians had half of their land stolen right under their noses. Their population was split into two, half of it living in the Zionist state as a minority. Even in the borders of the Jewish state, the Jews owned only 11% of the land. The United States? Yes. Yugoslavia? Abstain. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. Why would the UN be so blatantly pro-Zionist? Do not underestimate the power of guilt. Anyone heard of the Holocaust? The UN sought to compensate the Jews over the deaths of 6 million Jews in World War II. Murdered by the Germans. they decided that the Palestinians should pay for it. Makes perfect sense. However, this amount of land, more than half of Palestine, was still not enough for the Zionists. David Ben-Gurion, the leader of the Zionist movement in Palestine, wrote in 1937, the Arabs will have to go. But one needs an opportune moment for making it happen. Such as a war. The Palestinians had no desire to fight the Zionists or start a war. They were used to living under different sovereigns for hundreds of years. Egyptians, Turks, British, and now the Zionists. In 1948, Ben-Gurion tells the Jewish agency executives, I believe that the majority of the Palestinian masses accept the partition as fait accompli and do not believe it is possible to overcome or reject it. The decisive majority of them do not want to fight us. Towards the end of 1947, the Zionist leadership came together and drew Plan Dalit. Plan Dalit was about securing the borders of Israel by cleansing, expelling and destroying Palestinian towns, villages and urban neighborhoods. The plan was implemented by the Zionist armed forces. And finally, in March, they began a push to ensure their control of areas that would become Israel under the partition. And as that happened, you began to get many more Palestinian Arabs fleeing, uh, particularly after a massacre at a place called Deir Yassin, although people now think it was probably somewhat over 100, but not 200. But Begin and uh, the Urgun and the Stern gang, Yitzhak Shamir was part of that, there was a combined attack in this Palestinian village that uh, massacred many people. And the Palestinians did carry out a retaliatory raid, killing about 70 uh, Jewish doctors on, on the road to Jerusalem shortly thereafter. But after that, you had mobile radio bands, the Begin put into play, uh, threatening more Deir Yassins if the Arabs didn't flee. In other words, you'll be massacred just like Deir Yassin. So it became part of the propaganda. 